Hey guys, have you ever heard of a thousand ways to die? They're life saving fires! No! It's pretty much the funniest show ever made, but that doesn't mean it's actually good. There is the jacuzzi, here is my penis, get naked now! A classic lost throughout time, it's a show that nobody talks about and I have no idea why. It's pretty much the memeiest show ever devised by man, and I'm surprised that no one jokes about it now. It was a show on Spike TV, a network that basically was man central and was recently bought out by Paramount Studios. Hopefully, I don't get blocked while making this video, as a lot of companies like to abuse the fair use rules on YouTube. This show is a documentary slash reality series of people dying in horrific ways for entertainment. Now that might seem really cruel and morbid, but everyone who's dying in this show is either evil or stupid. Three, two, one, let her rip! The narrator of the show is none other than your boy, Ron Perlman, otherwise known as Hellboy. I used to love to lick my testicles. Whoever invented neutering should have theirs cut off. He's pretty much the best actor in the whole show, as everyone else is basically porn star level material. And even though that might sound bad, the actors are probably the funniest part of the show. They're very over-exaggerated and sometimes they don't really represent who they're portraying. Perry, please don't do this. No, Perry, nothing! You tell me right now, you really want this whole thing over this! What the fuck was that? When these guys undo their pants, that's when the game is on. You know what, I gotta be honest with you, I still can't believe that they got Ron Perlman to do the narration for the show. You wanna know what that's like? That's like when the nostalgia critic got the lead singer of Slipknot to be in the wall review. I mean, how the fuck does that happen? You must have been sucking a lot of cock for him to be on that episode. For the first two episodes, the show was narrated by Tom Beers, and until the third episode, Ron Perlman stepped in. Until after a while, Joe Irwin then did the narration for the last few episodes. Although I wouldn't pick Joe to be the narrator of this show, he probably has the most obscene deaths. I say this because most of them are either naked or involve f***ing <laughs> off. <laughs> but Ron had class and he was actually sinister and had character. He was epic. And then you get Joe who's just so Biz casual. Carla chose James's big wad of cash. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Over Perry's big wad. But hey, at least it's not the first guy doing the whole show. That guy sucked. Let me show you the first intro that he did. The human body is remarkably resilient. Every day we fight a new war against germs, toxins, injury, illness, catastrophe, and calamity. Now listen to what my boy Ron does. Death is everywhere. Most of us try to avoid it. Others can't get out of its way. Every day we fight a new war against germs, toxins, injury, illness, and catastrophe. Ooh, it's so good. But enough about the actors. Let's talk about the show. If you keep it from size, I'll pop a cap in your ass. Every episode has the same formula. They introduce the victim, they get a random specialist to say his lines, they show the death, they get a doctor to explain how he died, they make fun of him, and then they go on to the next victim. However, it's not as repetitive as it sounds. Sometimes they mix it up, but either way, it's pretty much the funniest thing you're ever gonna see. Oh God! Panicking. Ah. Peter runs blindly right into a 600 pound very hungry brown bear. You're probably wondering what the specialist is. Well, in every death, there's always a guy who explains the history of something or what the character is doing and why it's dangerous. They include but are not limited to historians, wildlife experts, medical health experts, biochemists, musicians, carnival owners, pro skaters, professional team builders, bakery owners, a professional mall Santa, strippers, fart competitors. Anything that comes up in your head, it's probably gonna be there. An adult clown is a clown that likes to party with beautiful women. 
I don't do children, so I don't do birthday parties. And they're only there for 19 seconds at most, so have fun talking to them before they're gone forever. I don't even know if these people are real, and I'm not gonna look it up. What I am gonna look up are these deaths. Apparently, they are based on real-life deaths, except that they change the names, which doesn't really make sense to me because you're already making fun of them. How will a name change help that? Besides, they're dead. And if they were dicks in real life, why would anyone care? One of the deaths called Onesie and Dunsey is a complete fucking lie. The host named Chet is not based on one person, but three. The folding chair collapse happened to Harnold McCoo on the Cable Value Network in 1988. Oh God, Harold. The broken sword happened to Sean Lafar on the Knife Collector Show on the Shop at Home Network in 2001. And I am not gonna look up who fucking died from candles. What do you think, I'm gay? The death Bad Max, where an actor got his intestines sucked out from a pool, was based off of a six-year-old who died nine months after. So after researching on some of these deaths, I have come to the conclusion that, yeah, they are based on real life. Except they changed the age, day, year, gender, role, blood type. They probably messed up their personality as well, but who cares? They're probably not even real. Also, they're dead. Now you're probably wondering what's the best episode, what's like the most interesting thing. I'm gonna have to stop you right there. For every episode, there's about like five to six deaths, and there are usually only two to three that are really good, and I couldn't just pick an episode, so I picked my favorite deaths, and I wanted to talk to you about them, and maybe we can laugh together. We'll start with eel effects, where two students shove an eel up the teacher's ass, and the eel eats his way out of his ass, and the teacher dies of bleeding to death from his ass. In the death, Mercury in Uranus, a man is at a hospital for the fourth time for losing things up his ass. He then finds 10 thermometers, tapes them together, and shoves them all up in his rectum. Before the nurse comes and finds out, he jumps on the bed. Unfortunately, he fucking breaks the thermometers and dies of mercury poisoning. It's just a classic death. How do you beat that one? Oh, maybe with this one. A couple have sex on an electric generator, and the man has a penis piercing, and somehow he gets electrocuted. Word up, wise man. Smoked is about two friends who smoke a lot, but one doesn't know how to smoke. So his friend finds a shotgun shell, puts cigarettes in it, and shoots him in the face because it's funny. Uh? I actually didn't even know you could do that, but yeah, 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 it works somehow. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna deny it. Fire in the Hole was about a Nazi in prison who has an epic way of getting out. He sends his backwards ass retard friend to shove a hand grenade up his ass. Oh! You like that? You need a lot of that in here. Unfortunately, they couldn't get the grenade out and release the pin, and they exploded all over the cell. Okay, here's another classic death, Bullshito. A rock band realizes they're cringe, and one of the members tries to off himself like a true Redditor. That didn't stop his guitar player from completing the grisly ritual with the traditional decapitation. In Soviet Russia, man gets cooked by his mate and has sex with raccoon. It was great sex, but it came at price. He lost his penor. This, uh, this is a called a uh, Boris Bitov. It is epic. It is, it is work of art. I'm sorry. I, I'm not gonna do that ever again. I'm, I'm not normally like this. Shit canned is the death of a man who gets jealous at his ex's wedding and tries to spike her drink with laxatives. The waiter switches the glasses and then the guy needs to take a poop. He goes outside to the garbage can and somehow gets stuck in it and rolls down the hill and dies. Blast Call tells the story of a fat drunk who pretends to be a human dartboard to get drinks. However, little does he know, he had explosives from work in his pocket, and when he fell down drunk, he blew himself up. Fecal Attraction is the story of a rock star who has taken all of his drugs and doesn't know what to do when his friend tells him to do Janko. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't way you can get high off your own ass. By the way, if you don't know what Jankum is, it's literally just puffing shit. After realizing he can't poop anymore, he goes to the porta potty and dies from huffing so much raw sewage. Moral to the story? Never get high on your own supply.
Okay, you're not gonna believe this one, but an Orthodox Jew falls in love with a Hawaiian hula dancer. He tries to woo his princess, but she rejects him because he's Jewish. Somehow, he gets so drunk, he catches himself on fire, and then he, he dead. You know, it's almost poetic at times. No, not because of the Holocaust. What are you, a fucking racist? Finally, I have saved the best for last. The Death Crib Your Enthusiasm is about a man who has a sexual fetish of being a giant baby. Even good babies have their moments. <laughs> Mommy's boobies need a rest. That's right. He dedicated an entire room for his sick role play and somehow fucking dies from his own crib door slamming on his vertebrae. Uh-oh, the little guy's got an owie. Does baby need a band-aid for his broken neck boo-boo? By the way, the specials on this death was a, an adult baby. I was actually very informed from him and I thank him for his service. You know what? After reviewing this show, I feel like it's uh, too dangerous for the public eye. I mean, in the wrong hands, people can get some crazy ideas. The show tells you a lot of interesting facts. Like, did you know that there's a knife with a CO2 canister in it, and with a push of a button, you can blow someone's stomach up? Yeah, it's called an injector knife. Oh, oh, or did you know that with enough pressure, you can blow your jaw off by biting down on red phosphorus? Yeah, you know what? This show is actually pretty wizard. I'm, I'm already coming up with a lot of pranks in my head right now. You know what? This show ain't half bad. I give it a spicy tuna roll. Now, if you would excuse me, I got some pranking to do, so... I'll see you around. Bye.